This is some cycle. In this video, we are looking at integrating parametric equations. So our first thing says find y dx when it's bound between six and three, when x is equal to t plus three and y is equal to t squared plus one. So to start off, the main problem we have is this is in terms of t and it's then dx. So obviously we cannot integrate this. These are in terms of x and this is dx, but then y is t squared plus one. So the trick we have to do in our first step is change the dx to dx over dt times by dt. So that means that what we're going to write is integrate y and then dx over dt times by dt. Now this is dx over dt times by dt is the same as dx, but now we've got it in terms of dt. So the next thing to do is change the limits into t rather than x, as both this 6 and this 3 is in terms of x, and we want it into 3. So therefore, we've got the first one of 6, say that 6 is equal to t plus 3. So therefore, t is equal to 3, and the other one is 3, is equal to t plus 3 so therefore t is equal to 0 so we can now rewrite this as integrating and we have at the top 3 then 0 and then we'll put the y in which is t squared plus 1 And then we need to work out what dx over dt is. So dx over dt, that's here. So therefore, dx over dt is going to be t plus 3 differentiated, which is going to give us 1. So going back to this idea, that's just going to be times by 1 this time, and that's in terms of dt. So now we've changed that to this. And now we can integrate it to get our final answer. So in order to do this, what we're going to have is integrating it gives a third t cubed plus t. And then we've got the limits of 3 and 0. So that is equal. If you put 3 in it, we're going to get 12. You put 0 in it, we're going to get 0, 12 minus 0, that's going to be 12 units squared. So the next question says that the curve C has the parametric equations x equals ln t plus 2 and x is equal to 1 over t plus 1. So we have to show that the area of R which is bounded between ln 2 and ln 4, is given by the integral 2, 0, so it's bounded by 2, 0, integral of 1 over t plus 1 times by t plus 2. So to start this off, we're going to put it in that same form that we looked at in the first question, and that is going to be integral of y, and then dx over dt, times by dt. So that means that what we're going to get is y is equal to 1 over 2 plus 1 and that's going to be times by dx over dt. Now dx over dt, if we're going to integrate that, ln is going to integrate to give 1 over t plus 2. So therefore, we're going to have integrating of 1 over t plus 1 times by t plus 2. But we haven't finished yet because we haven't looked at the limits yet. And in this, is asking us to get 2, 0. In this, we have ln 2 and ln 4. So therefore, in order to get these limits, what we're going to do is we're going to have ln 2 is equal 
Now this is an x value, so it's going to be equal to ln t plus 2. These luns and cancel, and we get 2 is equal to 2 plus 2, t plus 2. So therefore, t is equal to 0. And as we can see, that is the bottom limit there. Then we also have to see what it is when it's ln 4 is equal to ln t plus 2. Therefore, 4 is equal to t plus 2, so t is equal to 2. So that means that our final answer, which we'll put up here, is going to be integral 2, 0, 1, over, and then t plus 1, t plus 2 which is good because that is the answer it wants us to have. Now the next part is asking us to find an exact value for this area. And this is about using partial fractions a little bit. So not we've done the integrating now, now we need to see how we can use that to finish off this question. So we did look at this um, a couple of videos ago. So if you don't understand it, then look back at that for a full explanation. But this is gonna be the integrating and then we're going to have 2, 0 of that 1 over t plus 1 and then t plus 2. Is equal to a over t plus 1 plus b over t plus 2. So therefore, what we're going to have is 1 is equal to a t plus 2. And we've got we're getting this from timesing everything by the denominator here, plus b t plus 1. So that's got by timesing the denominator. Therefore, in order to cancel these, we can let we can let t equal minus 2, which is going to mean that b, when t is equal to minus 2, we're going to have 1 is equal to minus um, b. So therefore, b is equal to minus 1. And then a is equal to when t is equal to minus 1 to get b rid of then we're going to have minus 1 plus 2, a is going to be equal just to 1. So therefore, now what we have is integrating a, which is 1, over t plus 1, plus b, which is minus 1, so we can actually do minus 1 over t plus 2. So therefore, integrating that, we're going to get ln t plus 1. And then that's minus ln t plus 2. But we haven't put the limits in yet. So we can put brackets around these and say this is 2, 0. And then if we put 2 in, we're going to get ln, and then it's going to be 2 plus 1, so ln 3 minus, and then ln 4. And that's going to be minus ln 1 minus ln 2. Now, using the laws of logarithms and then minus, therefore, that's going to be ln 3 over 4 minus ln a half, which is going to be equal to ln 3 over 2. And that is our final answer.
So the final question we have has a curve. It says that this curve has the parametric equations x is equal to 3t squared and y is equal to sine 2t. So question A asks us to write down the value of t at the point A where the curve crosses the x-axis. So as we can see, it crosses the x-axis twice. One is evidently at zero, the other time is at A. So this means that what we're going to do is say that y is equal to zero, because this is zero here, it crosses the x-axis when y is equal to zero, and therefore zero is equal to sine 2t, so therefore t is equal to zero, but more importantly it is also equal to a half pi. And this is the one we're wanting as this is the point A. Next one, B is the bulk of the question. And it says that find in terms of pi the exact area of a shaded region bounded by C and the x axis. So again, we're going to start off in exactly the same way we normally do. However, this time we already have the limits t. That is both in t, 0 and a half pi. We do not need to change this at all. So therefore, half pi at the top, integrating, and then we've got this 0 here. And then we'll have y, and then again, we'll do this trick of dx over dt, dt. So that is going to be equal to a half pi, and then 0, and then y we have there, it's sine 2t, so you can put sine 2t. And that is going to be times by dx over dt, which is going to be 6t. And that is there in dt. So now we just have a, a integration by parts this is going to be. And it's going to be integration by parts because 6t is going to differentiate to give a constant. So that means that they're times together and one of them differentiates to give a constant. So again, if you don't know about integration by parts, I do have a video on it which you can go and look at, but I will go for it now. And we know that we can say that u is equal to 6t, whereas the other one, sine 2t, can be equal to dv over dt is equal to sine 2t. So then du over dt is equal to 6. And then v is going to be equal if we're uh, integrating this. We're going to get minus a half cos 2t. So therefore, we're going to use the equation of integration by parts, which is uv minus integral of v times by du over dx. Obviously, we've got this in terms of x at the moment. We just need to put it. We've got the t's here to do that. So therefore, uv is going to be 6t times by minus a half cos 2t. So that is going to be equal to minus 3t cos 2t. And then that will be minus, which is actually going to go to plus, because this is already going to be a minus. We've got a minus, a minus is going to be plus. And v du dx is minus 3 over 2 sine t. So that's going to be plus 3 over 2 sine 2t. So now we have that, we're going to put this around and put our limits back in. So we've got that half pi, and we have a zero. But we already know that sine 2t, as we have here, that's just going to be zero. So that can just cancel out immediately. And when we put zero in, we're also going to know that that's going to cancel out. Everything of that is going to cancel out because minus 
3 times 0 is 0. So that means that 0 is non-existent. The only thing that we need to work out is putting a half pi into it. So therefore, at the end of this, we're going to say that we've got minus 3 times by a half pi. And that is going to be times by cos pi. Put that in your calculator, and what you're going to get is 3 over 2 pi. And that is the final answer. So thank you for watching this video, and see you soon. Bye.